Welcome to the NST lectures on modular architectures. My name is Herwig Mannert and in this third part we are going to look into the integration architectures to connect various cross-cutting concerns to the main hierarchical architecture. So we have seen in the previous part discussing design directives for modular architectures that designing and producing artifacts units of work emerge and they can have different versions and variants. And encapsulating such units of work as separate cohesive modules following the concept of high cohesion enables ha to have exponential variation gains through combinations of variants of modules. On the other hand, changes in those module variants may lead to exponential ripple costs due to the propagation of impacts on variants of other connected modules. It's basically the principle of low coupling. So low coupling and high cohesion seem to be grounded in combinatorics. Now, of course, all of this is also valid for the integration of other dimensions, other concerns, often called cross-cutting concerns. Because if we have a main hierarchical structure or a hierarchical architecture, this is basically only one dimension, like the rooms of a house, the main domain entities of a software system. But we have more concerns or dimensions, so-called cross-cutting concerns, concerns that cut across our entire primary structure or hierarchy. Now, these other concerns like utilities, water, electricity in construction or persistency, remote access, access control in software, these other concerns, they can impact and therefore create ripple effects in the main hierarchical structure. Now, these other concerns should be considered on their own concern plane, in their own dimension. It is just another concern plane. It needs to be designed there. And in this concern dimension, we can design the structure of this other utility of dimension. But of course, we have to integrate or interconnect it to the main structural hierarchical architecture. Now, if we're looking at architectures for integrating those concerns, we distinguish several architectures for the integration of these additional dimensions, utilities, or so-called cross-cutting concerns, the concerns that cut right across the main functional structure. These architectures typically evolve over time as the utilities, as these concerns mature, they come, become more and more mature, they become more and more omnipresent than these architectures mature. So, the first architectures that we will discuss are typically the early architectures, while the later architectures typically the later or more mature architectures are. Consider, for instance, this embedded dedicated integration. We have a room and in this room we have another concern or dimension, heating. And we typically could have a fireplace to take care of that concern. Now, of course, a fireplace is embedded in this room. It is also dedicated. Actually, the room is constructed with the fireplace in it. It is one construction. It is kind of dedic a dedicated construction and the concern is taken care of embedded. And if we have another room, we would need another fireplace if we want heating in that other room and still another room, we would have another fireplace. So, if the house is the structure, we would have multiple embedded and dedicated implementation of this heating concern fireplace. Another architecture, typically a little later, a little more mature, is that we have a still embedded architecture, but standardized. So, here you see typically a heater based on coal, for instance, which is duplicated, embedded in every room of the house, but however, it is at least standardized. 
it does not have to be constructed in a dedicated way while constructing the room in the house, but it can be bought. Now it still needs to be installed and is embedded in the room and if you need heating in multiple rooms you would need multiple instances, but it's at least standardized. Now, also more modern structures, huh? if you look at a fireplace in a house it seems a bit old-fashioned, but more modern structures like a jet bridge and you look at the concern of cooling the jet bridge with an air conditioning installation, you see that we would still have there a typical embedded, though standardized, standardized air conditioning system, but embedded in the jet bridge installation. What also is typically embedded, but standardized, are music CDs. Music CDs, CD players, they are embedded in rooms, in houses, because it's a duplication of the content of the CDs, it's a duplication and embedding of the device knowing how to play the music, but it's kind of standardized. Now, after a while we get the emergence of centralized concern modules, because work units emerge in the embedded modules for heating, for cooling, for music, and they become eligible to become separate encapsulated modules duplicated across the various embedded instances. And so you could have more fine-grained modules like burners and exhausts for heating. And duplication can also be mitigated by centralization. Instead of heating in every room and duplicating that heating system, you could have a more centralized heating. You could share a common central module, for instance, the burner and the exhaust. And you could relay the intended yield, the heat in this case, to the various modules being the rooms. Such centralizations can lead to economies of scale, of course, because you could produce the heat or the cooling in a more centralized, more productive uh, way where you can enjoy economies of scale. Increasing the overall efficiency of the heating and cooling, but also enabling features like redundancy, for instance. Because you could argue if you have a central uh, installation for heating or cooling, and when that goes down, everything goes down, but you can provide redundancy at the central point. Otherwise, you would need to provide redundancy at every embedded installation, which is not feasible. So if we look again at, at, at fireplaces or, or burners or fires like this for coal, you could say now you could centralize the heating for the whole house in a central place and distribute it, which is called, of course, central heating. And then you would have radiators, you would have conduits distributed the heated fluidum or water throughout the rooms of the house and therefore it's a dedicated framework to relay the centralized production of the concern. The same would be valid if we would have a central diesel generator to produce electricity, we would have conduits, connections to relay that electricity for the entire house to the various rooms, but of course, and we had sockets to get access to the electricity. Now, of course, we know that we don't have diesel generators anymore because we have a standardized framework for electricity. A little bit even further down the road, more mature, that you have a standardized framework connecting the various houses to the standardized framework providing the electricity for an entire district or town. And of course, you could also look at the two levels at the same time, where you would have a standardized framework to provide electricity for the whole region or district or town, and then you would have a dedicated gateway to that connected and then an internal framework, a dedicated internal framework in the house distributing that electricity to the various sockets in the house in the rooms. Now, of course, that makes it easy because this dedicated this gateway, this framework gateway allows you once again, if you're disconnected from the grid, to have your own diesel generator for emergency usage or some other reasons 
because you have that framework gateway, you could switch between the standardized electricity grid or a dedicated diesel generator or solar panels or some other renewable way of um, having electricity. The same is true for the internet, of course. Internet connectivity is provided by a standardized framework that distributes internet connectivity uh, throughout all regions, all distri uh, the district, the town, but you can have a framework gateway connecting to that standardized framework that provides the connectivity through the whole region and then further distributed via a local area network in your house to the various modules that would be the rooms or even the various devices. And of course, there once again, having this framework gateway would allow you, if you would have been disconnected from this standardized framework or you would be in a very remote location where the standardized um, framework, this connectivity grid is not present by replacing it with your own version of the generator in this case would be, for instance, a dish connecting you to a satellite network such as Starlink. Now, the presence of an interconnected infrastructure for certain concerns may also enable interconnected architectures for value-added concerns on top of other concerns. For instance, we have seen that music was typically uh, created and played using an embedded implementation. However, once you have a interconnected architecture for infrastructure for connectivity for the internet, you could easily have on top of that now such interconnected architectures for multimedia and entertainment services like Netflix, like Spotify or marketplaces and transaction services on top of interconnected and payment systems. So Spotify, for instance, is a relay to a standardized framework, but it only became possible because the connectivity was there, the standardized framework for connectivity, but then now you don't have to duplicate and embed uh, CDs with music, storage of music in every house, in every room, for every device. You don't have to duplicate the devices with the functionality of actually playing the music, interpreting the digital um, music and playing it. No, you have a centralized, standardized framework infrastructure that allows you to play music from standardized storage and just interconnect to it from various devices like smartphones, um, um, just speakers, smartphones, uh, computers, laptops, tablets, etc. And the same for video services like Netflix. Or transaction systems, markets, booking, Airbnb, uh, Amazon, Zalando, you name it, all these kinds of transaction services now also become possible and available through a standardized framework on top of a standardized framework for connectivity, which is a more basic concern. We see the same thing in software architectures. If you look at modules like entity domain entities and like uh, domain objects like uh, an invoice, an order, a customer, etc., and you would have a cross-cutting concern like persistency, it's provided at the level of the application via a standardized framework like a JPA provider, and then you could just connect through it, connect through some annotations, some a couple of lines of code and connect to that standardized framework. The same is true for kind of yellow pages functionality in software like we have, for instance, with Java naming and directory in interface providers. They're typically uh, software applications make some kind of a framework gateway in infrastructure, some kind of wrapper around it that allows the rest of the domain entities of the application to connect through this framework gateway, which is kind of a, a large clause or singleton to that specific provider. Now, if you look at the architectures for integrating those concerns, we 
now realize that we don't only have to design architectures for the main concern, for the main functional um, structure, but also for the various other concerns, we need to design the architectures and we need to design the architectures to connect the various concerns to the main concern. So this means that we also need directives or design guidelines for these interconnection architectures. How do we interconnect these various concern architectures with the main functional structure? So the first guideline we propose is, of course, encapsulation, which is basically low, low coupling, avoiding impacts and changes. It's the essence of depleting coupling. We want to shield the main hierarchical structure from ripple effects due to a change in the implementation of the concern. So suppose here you have such a fireplace or, or a coal heater, you, of course, if you want to remove it from the room, you get, you still got this chimney, you know, and, and you, you still have a lot of troubles. You have a big hole in your wall and a chimney and set. So it's not really well encapsulated. If you would have electric heaters, it's perfectly encapsulated. It uses another concern, a framework, standardized framework for electricity for the other concern. However, these heaters, you can just plug them into socket, take them out of the socket, move them out of the room. There won't be a hole in your wall. There won't be the leftovers of a chimney. So it is basically very much encapsulated, which is conceptually better. Of course, one can argue it's not that great example of efficiency, but efficiency is something else that has basically to do with the interconnection and the economies of scale. But it is well encapsulated. And we represent it by having such a nice contour around these bullets. The second guideline, we were just saying that, of course, this would not mean that you would have a great efficiency. You should take care, uh, you should take advantage of the economies of scale. So the second guideline is interconnection. And the essence of interconnection is purging duplications, huh? cohesive model, purging duplications. Avoid a multitude of changes to duplications due to the change in the implementation of a concern. Yeah? If we have separate heaters everywhere and we want to change the heaters, we need to change the heaters everywhere in every room. And so we want to purge the duplications and avoid the duplicated multitude of changes. It also allows for typical advantages of centralization, increased efficiency in large installations due to economies of scale and also easier building in redundancy at the central place. But of course, the first guideline, the encapsulation guideline, remains valid for the connection relays. So we now relay or connect, interconnect to a more central installation, but we need to be careful that these relays are encapsulated so that we can replace the central implementation without ripple effects all over in every room, in every module connected to the main system. Now, the encapsulation may be implicit with respect to a category of changes. For instance, for every central heating system that circulates hot water through the radiators. Once again, we look at a central heating system where we have a relay to a framework, a dedicated framework. We have a central heating installation. We have uh, pumping heated water through conduits, pipes connected to the various radiators in the room. And so basically we should encapsulate this. And we can because we can just exchange the central heating system with another implementation and as long as it uses a fluid like water to distribute the heat to the various room or radiators, we can just continue to use the central heating system, continue to use all the radiators without changing them, without impact. The same is true for, for instance, in software. We would have, at the level of entities, the persistency concern would be interconnected, relayed to a central persistency framework, 
And if we separated it well in a separate version transparent class, we would be able to change that central system with limited effort and limited impact by just using another provider for the persistency or another JPA provider. The third guideline is down propagation, because the decoupling between the main hierarchical structure and the distribution architecture needs to be handled as well for the individual cross-cutting concerns. Because if we would enlarge or have additional main modules, like rooms in a house or other domain entities in a software system, it would require additional utility conduits and connect that may impact the primary structure. Extensions of changes to the utility distribution may typically impact the modules of the primary hierarchical structure. For instance, put it a little bit easier in simple words, if you would have additional rooms, you extend your house, you have a couple of additional rooms, you would need new water or electricity conduits connection, and that may require drilling in the wall. Of course, the encapsulation guideline remains valid, and of course, the interconnection guideline also remains valid. So we should have, and we should encapsulate those concerns in the various models or rooms. We should have them not embedded, but interconnected, relayed to a more centralized structure and then we should down-propagate it. Once again, we have, for instance, the central heating system. And so we've seen that we can replace the central heating system, the central production of heat with another implementation. However, if we would add another room to the house, of course, we would need to extend the conduits, the connections distributing the heated water. And that could have impact and changes to the modules, to the radiators, to the modules, to the walls, to be able to connect the new room. And the same would be valid for the electricity. If we would have another room, we would have to extend the electricity distribution, the electricity conduits from the existing rooms to the new room. And this could, of course, have consequences and impacts, because everyone knows we would be drilling through the walls for these electricity or heating conduits. So what we basically need to avoid is to be able to extend the main structure um, to limit the impact if, uh, for the additional cross-cutting concerns that we have seen in software in the NST Foundation lecture, that we would need for every module, for every software domain entity, additional separate encapsulated classes taking care for that module, for that domain entity of the various concerns like remote access, persistency and access control, and combine these various additional classes into so-called elements. So for every domain entity, like an invoice, a customer, an order, etc., we would have multiple classes doing the connection with the various cross-cutting concerns, the interconnection, the relaying to the more centralized framework. And that, of course, means that we need some kind of elements, elements taking care in the main hierarchical structure of the interconnection to the various cross-cutting concern planes. As we see it here, we have a main class and we have all these classes for every at the lowest hierarchical level down propagated to the individual domain entities we have classes connecting these domain entities to the various cross-cutting concern planes or dimensions and we could also have some way with a gateway some without a gateway we could have additional concerns as well now what does that mean for housing that means for housing that we have to propagate down as well this interconnection to the modular level as fine-grained as possible for the interconnection between the various other dimensions, utilities, cross-cutting concerns like heating, electricity, wireless access, etc. Now, this is an example 
where we have this hive house, we have hexagon modules for a house and these hexagon modules can be combined into multiple modules creating a house and they come with relays or interconnections to the utilities like electricity, uh, water, uh, heating, etc. So these are interconnected elements. However, of course, what is the, the disadvantage? Why is it not yet perfect? You can only have combinations of these hexagons. You cannot have really free forms of housing. And that is because the down propagation is not deep enough. The down propagation goes all the way of the interconnection with the various cross-cutting concerns, goes all the way to these hexagons, but not all the way to even smaller and more detailed building blocks. And therefore, your basic building block interconnecting to the various concerns is such a hexagon, and you can have only a limited variation in forms. What we are basically saying is that we need encapsulation, interconnection, but also down propagation. You should down propagate the encapsulated connection to the architectures for the various cross cutting concerns on utilities all the way to your elementary building blocks. You should have some kind of symbolic brick element, some brick element that would provide you with a structure, with some protection, isolation, with some kind of support core, but also encapsulated conduits, encapsulated conduits for communications. So you would have everywhere that you put a new brick, you would have ready connection to communications, to heating water, to sanitary water, to electricity, etc. And these conduits would also be able to provide encapsulation, you could have replace your copper for the communications by some optical fiber by just using the same conduit. Now, of course, such a symbolic brick element that provides encapsulation, interconnection to the utilities and down propagation to the lowest level, you could have much more freedom in actually building houses because you could have combinations of such brick both with or without a support core, both with and without uh, utility conduits, because you wouldn't need the utility conduits on every row of the bricks, but only on a couple of rows. Uh, you wouldn't need a support core on every brick. So you could have a, a couple of instances of these bricks, um, both with support core, with or without utilities, uh, etc. And you could have free-form housing again, and not just a combination of several uh, hexagons. And that, of course, would provide encapsulation, interconnection, and down propagation, and you could build such houses. And if you would want to add another room, you could simply remove one wall, reuse these kinds of interconnected bricks, and reuse them to construct the next room, the room behind it, and you would have right away uh, access to water, electricity, heating without drilling in the existing walls. So if you have any questions, uh, my name is Herwig Manaert. You can always email me. Thank you.